<laughs> oh, I'm recording. Okay. I Great. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Oh. The sudden moment of pan a moment of panic. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Everything I say is recorded. No, it's right here. Pick it up, whoever. Uh, okay. okay. So it looks like we have Dame Johanna on with us remotely. And oh, that's cool. okay. Hendrick and Sharon, is that right? Reading from a distance here. Welcome. We've got a little slow start. It's, I want to do that. And I'm excited to see what Steve has to show for us tonight. His Lordship Rod Navarre, whose last name I'm very bad at pronouncing. Would you introduce yourself and tell us what you're going to do with us tonight? Okay. So, uh, hi, I'm Rod Navarre. Hawkinson is my last name, but Rod Navarre works, or hey, you. Um, on uh, Facebook, you'll see me as Steve Alter, A L T E R. Um, so, yeah, so I've been in the SCA for 30 mumble years and I've done a lot of various stuff. Uh, this is one of the one of the little projects that I took on uh, several years ago when I wanted to dress in uh, really period uh, peasant attire. Uh, so I found a, a, a couple instructions on how to make uh, how to make medieval shoes. Uh, now, when people talk about medieval shoes, uh, every, you know, generally people talk about turn shoes, which are which can be beautiful, very nice. Uh, they require some uh, training, practice, skill uh, to do them appropriately. Uh, but uh, uh, lacking that, uh, I went for the very simplest which is the bag shoe. Um, now, if you looked at the uh, uh, articles that I posted online, I posted two different um, instructions for making bag shoes. Uh, I've used one of them. I haven't used the other one, but it looked fairly similar. Uh, and then the third document that I posted was actually documentation on uh, you know, archaeological finds of bag shoes. And it was very interesting. It described how uh, the making of bag shoes was not limited to shoemakers. It was a thing that ordinary peasants would do for themselves. They'd get some pieces of cheap leather and then they'd make these shoes and they'd wear them until they wore out and then they'd make another pair. So, uh, so it is it is very period, uh, certainly going back to Roman times. I don't know how much farther beyond that, uh, but pretty much anywhere and any time in the medieval period, particularly if you're if you're a uh, uh, peasant class, uh, you're you're going to see these. So this is one of the shoes that I made. I've got big feet, so it kind of looks like a boat. Um, but uh, you'll, you'll see it's very stiff. Uh, just for, uh, for grins, I coated it in beeswax to make it, uh, to make it waterproof, which I thought was really cool, except the problem with beeswax is unless it's really warm, it's very stiff. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that again, um, but it, it's sturdy. Um, this actually is the weight of leather that I made it out of. Um, I don't know. Offhand, I would say that's probably somewhere around three or four ounce. Uh, but anyway, that's the remnant from the pieces that I that I made it from. Um, and the other shoe I deconstructed. I had to stick it in the oven to uh, to warm it up so that I could flatten it out because again, it's coated in beeswax. But basically that's what the shoe is. Um, so the pattern that we're gonna work on making tonight is essentially this. 
Uh, oh, Did that talk to me? Oh, okay. So uh, that is from one of the uh, uh, pages of instructions that I uh, that I posted. So basically, what we're going to work on is page one of this uh, for tonight, and then for the next time, we'll make sure that everybody has appropriate leather, and then we'll take the uh, patterns that you make. You only have to make one pattern because these shoes are not finicky as to which foot you put them on. Um, so next week we'll actually cut, use those patterns to cut some leather, uh, make the holes and figure out how to stitch them up. Um, I started making another pair just out of a piece of white suede. So I've only started on it, but that basically that's the, that's as far as I've gotten so far. Um, so that's the, this is one part of the stitching. The other part of the stitching will basically be to bring the back end up and tuck it around so that this essentially becomes where your ankle is. And the shoe will eventually look something like that. Now, these laces on the back here will be loose. So you can tie them, you can you know, tighten it around your ankle. Um, or and then loosen it when you want to take it off. Uh, these stitches here are are permanent. They'll be. I won't be removing those. So all you need for um, for a pair of shoes is two pieces of leather of the appropriate size, depending on the size of your foot. The and uh, and lacing. So um, I've got a bunch of leather thong, and we, we'll see how, how far that goes. Um, but that's it. That's the only materials you need. No particular skill or uh, technique required. Uh, you can get fancy with these if you want to spend some time with it and, and, and play with it. But at a very basic level, this is all you need. talk about insoles and inserts. Oh, yes. OK. So um, when I made these, I made them for a particular use. Essentially, I was going to use them for 15 minutes. Um, and I mean, they're comfortable enough, uh, but you know, I've got old feet, and I need some support. And I don't think I would want to walk around uh, the whole day in these without any support. Um, so when you make a, uh, a pattern for this, I would strongly recommend that if you, if particularly if you wear prescription orthotics, or if you want some kind of a, a cushioned insole or some kind of arch support, have that under your foot when you make the, when you make the measurements. And then just make sure that you allow enough extra leather around it to uh, to incorporate that. Uh, then you can then they'll be hiding inside your very period shoes, and no one will ever know how comfortable you are. Um, also, another thing you could do is take a uh, a heavy piece of leather and put it on the inside just as some extra padding against stone things. Or you could put it on the outside, uh, glue it on or, or stitch it on if you're really ambitious uh, to actually give yourself a sole. So those are, those are extra things. You know, again, I made these to wear for 15 minutes. Um, I'm, making, I'm making this pair to wear for maybe 30 minutes. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm not so terribly worried about uh, uh, about comfort in the long term. Uh, one of my main concerns is that if I'm going to be walking in grass, um, I am definitely allergic to honeybee stings. And so even this, you know, if I know I, if I know I need to do something where I'm walking, uh, also there's. Uh, 
There are different ways you can lace these up. Okay. Um, you can lace it up so it's closed like this, or you can lace it up so that the top is open. I think that's called the bang, B-A-N-G. Uh, I always go with closed bang, again, because of honeybees. Uh, but and using an open bang is just as easy to do, and it's a little more stylish. Uh, I think Bonnie posted a picture of a, uh, a historical shoe uh, on the yeah on the event posting, and that one had an open bang. Uh, you can do do it either way with the same with the same piece of leather. Uh, also, if you're walking on these, it's just it's just you and a thin piece of leather and the world. It was a place to stuff the shoe with something, old rags, grass, straw. Uh, I've got some wool here. So I just, stuffed, I, I, I just stuffed it in there and wore it on that. And actually it was uh, fairly comfortable for 15 minutes. Um, so anyway, that's that part of the, uh, of the project. Um, now let me talk about leather. Um, I have a bunch of leather. If this weight of leather is good for you. Um, it's a little on the light side, I would prepare shoe, but it's very nice leather. Uh, I think it's about uh, about three, uh, three, ounce, three or four ounce leather. Uh, something like this is maybe about six ounce. So it's stiffer, it'll last longer, uh, but these shoes are made to be disposable. Um, so if this weight of leather is good for me, uh, I'm very willing to let you have what you need to, to make your shoes with. Um, one thing is there are seams in order to get pieces that are big enough, you might need to work around some seams. Uh, and I think we'll already hit Technical difficulty. We'll get back to you here. Hang on. Don't leave us. Everyone else? Um, Sharon said no. Can you hear me? Can I get a yes or a thumbs up, please? Thank you. They can hear us. All right. Okay. The recording's still going. Back so where Steve's standing and see if they can still hear you. All right. Can you hear me here? Oh, I got a thumbs up. Okay, we're good. All right, I can project. So my secret for getting large amounts of leather. Category. You will find almost always there are people advertising their sofas they want to get rid of. Um, so I harvested a couple of those, I collected a couple of those and basically slaughtered them for their hides. Uh, and it's very nice leather that has gotten me through a, a number of projects. Uh, the only difficulty is getting rid of what's left. I, I use the lumber and put the rest of it in the trash. Uh, one thing I did, usually with a, with a sofa like that, the, uh, the seats and the armrests are pretty ragged, but I just made an apron out of it. So this is my apron for working with molten leather, molten metal. 
So, uh, so anyway, that's where this stuff came from. Uh, I hauled it with me from Southern California, and you are perfectly welcome to use that if you want. Uh, I've got this piece right here that I bought from uh, Oregon Leather. Uh, Oregon Leather's uh, scrap bin is $10 a pound. Uh, this piece right here is two pounds. And that's probably enough for two pairs of shoes. So um, if anybody, uh, you know, have your own leather that you want to use that's that's cool if you want to use some of some of my leather if you want some heavier weight leather uh, i can get you some from oregon leather um but uh so anyway that's where that that part comes from so would you like people to pay you in advance to have you pick up from oregon leather uh sure we can do that all right so the First order of business is uh, to make patterns. Then, then we can talk about leather afterwards. Uh, I've got a few pieces of, uh, of duck canvas. Oh, okay. All right, Bonnie's got some, uh, some brown paper. And actually I've got a couple large pieces of canvas that came out of the baronial storage bin uh, that was going to get thrown away. So I figured, what the heck, they'll, they'll, make, uh, they'll make patterns. Uh, so anyway, we can use that with this. So with this pattern here, I think it's you know, fairly self-descriptive. Basically, you put your foot on, the, on your pattern material. Yeah, OK. You put your foot on the uh, on your pattern material, and then you draw a uh, this kind of yeah this outline around it that is uh, let's see the length of from the heel tip to the most protruding toe plus one to two inches. I'd give it two inches. Uh, so basically one inch on either side of the, the heel to toe, distance from the ground to the ankle plus one inch, distance from around the foot and in. Uh, so basically those are all the measurements you need to take. And you just put your foot down on it, draw, draw around your toe that gives you uh, a few inches on either side. You end up with something relatively that shape. And that's the size of a piece of the two pieces of leather you need. So I've got, let's see, I've got four pieces of duck canvas that will work very nice for this. Um, And then this hip. So Steve is working with some of the heavier canvas, showing folks cutting out some roughly foot size chunks so people can use it to make patterns. And it looks like it's maybe 14 inches by 24 inches. Rough guess. So this smells like old camping trips. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get a off of that one. That's that's going to be kind of, okay. that's that's to my foot, so it's probably for Rodivar is slightly large gunboat. Yeah, slightly large. His pattern is just over a foot across, and let's see, about sixteen or seventeen inches lengthwise, and a foot across. But so that I, gives you a ballpark for yeah. what size paper to start with. I wear uh, 
I wear 13 extra wide shoes, so. Uh, they want you to speak up. You're choppy okay. and they can hear Sorry me with that. my loud old voice. I wear 13 extra wide shoes. So if anyone uh, has any, any feet larger than that, I pity you. Yes, this means you're going to have to take your socks, your shoes off. You can leave your socks on, but take your shoes yeah, off. Yeah, you can leave your shoe, your socks on. These things are, uh, these shoes are adjustable enough. Let's see, for a smaller person. Here. Okay. So now it's a matter of getting your fabric ready and getting your foot ready to put down there and draw the lines. One more of these. Oh, yeah, sure. I've, I've got a bunch of them there. Go ahead, take it. Wow, Kendrick says he bought a five ounce single shoulder because he's in Boston. I think that might do it, Kendrick. <laughs> you might be able to shoe the whole bear, Yeah, I was going to say, how big are you? Hell of two feet. Okay, so we're we're learning to do this remote video thing while we're doing different stuff and it gets a little bit tricky so bear with us we'll get better at it as we go along okay so my pattern is if i put my foot in the center of it i've got two inches extra on the front and back and three inches extra on the sides. Uh, and then basically just make some, put your foot in the middle of your pattern, adjust it on one end so that your two inches, your heel is two inches away from one, one side of the pattern. Uh, and then make some measurements, a couple marks, and just draw an arc around it. So here. Okay, these are these are slightly smaller ones. So will these be the shoes eventually, or will they be just oh, no. patterns? This is just a pattern. Just a pattern. Yeah. So here, and Thank you, know, you. And you only need one. You only need one because they're Lovely. one. Lovely. One shoe fits all feet. Um, I've got some uh, magic markers over here. You need a marker. <laughs> marker, marker, marker. Well, you don't need all of them. <laughs> I'm going to pass them down. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Okay, I'll let you do that. I'll take this. Okay. I may be entirely wrong about this idea, but I think it would work. What? Oh, he's got these bratty flight on shoes that he's not using anymore. He can just make the pattern around oh. the nose and then sew it up sure. to the top of it. Yeah. Sure. It, it, really? Okay. The, the, the comment was made that uh, one of our attendees here has just a, um, uh, there were ratty pair of slip on shoes. Uh, you can certainly make your pattern around that. If your pattern ends up a little larger than you need, you can either stuff it with uh, Honey, I think they just lost video. She doesn't have the potties. Well, she just threw herself down a minute ago. Okay, I'll run back out there. 
Seems like it's a good speaker. Yeah, the speaker's working good. Bear with us. We're having technical difficulties. Oh, Grandma's coming it's back. Reconnecting. It lost connection, oh. it says. We're just having moments. That's how I measure the Go ahead. Do you have to bring your pattern? Um, well, actually, this was actually in my technical difficulty. And that's, and that's one of the shoes. Cats, your Wi Fi, that's why. Thank you, Captain. My turn. It just timed out. <laughs> Ebony. Come here. <laughs> Hang in there, folks. Where's my Abby? Technical difficulties, please stand by. Yeah, no, well, it's great. It's over to this one. <laughs> that's going to be probably more there, right? That's why we're making a pattern. And then we're back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, look, now you can see. So here is Rothgar with his pattern. Here we have people working on making a pattern. Well, so, yeah. Grandma? I'm muted. No. Right. 
I just have sensitive skin. The leather gets well, wet, oh, okay. and then it will rub me. All right, no, so, uh, and that's fine. I mean, you it, know, you, yeah. So uh, I'm thinking if I would have it curl over. Hi, thing. sorry. Anyway, that's. I'm gonna try that. All right. I think we fixed it. Off. So on the on the. So I, just, I would. Okay. Show it to him to make sure that. You're... <laughs> um. It's fixed. Uh, recording. Uh, we'll figure out where the recording is later. Yeah. It'll be somewhere. Oh, that is um, Grandma. Um, so, on the, on do the, you want to uh, sit here and talk to them on the magic? On the magic machine? I don't know. Careful, that's yes, that's at an angle. I, I got it from so, you just as I was leaving. My phone has to stay here. here. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to uh -huh. kind of play around with the camera and see if we can get you some good view of think what's think going on. That's what I need to know. Yeah. 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 I think if I'm talking, you'll see mine over yeah. the main <laughs> camera. We'll find out. No, you don't need it. Right. Don't unmute. Um, I think I did okay. it. And I get very bad here. All right. So, cool. Nice. Anyway, so I was just thinking. Yeah. The other Bonnie Williams <laughs> needs to not be allowed <laughs> yeah, to have a camera. Yeah, so some extra yeah. space. Yeah. This is and the part. Then, this is so the part you want to see. It's very funny. But you're doing it right. How that whole thing happened. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, You're watching the sky. And uh, do I put it out now? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the um. Uh, Anyone who's into uh, macrame will find the cooking a whole lot easier than I did. I tried, I tried to get the answer. Run of theirs uh -huh. says that if you're into macrame and lacing things, the right. stitching will be simpler for you than it was for him. Grandma, this is what's getting your voice. And that's where I'm speaking. This okay. is muted. <laughs> but I know he's way down at the end of the okay. table. So. Sorry about that. Joanna had some questions. Um, yeah, so when we get to finally stitching it, there is a very simple, straightforward, no fuss, no muss stitching method. Uh, I, of course, uh, had to try to do it the difficult way. Uh, so I probably spent 10 times as much time figuring out the stitching on my original shoes as I did on making on like the whole rest of the construction. Um, but if you just want a, the basic stitch, it's in one, out one, in one, out one, in one, out one, and that's all you have to do. I'm going to turn this around. I want to see someone drawing out the pattern. Be careful. Pay attention. Something like that, I think. Okay. We don't both need to cure ourselves. Thank you. I am so excited about this. <laughs> Once you're done giving instructions, I will regale the company with the story of James Joanna's turn to. Okay. Oh, okay. I, so I have I, I have not got it, gotten into the technology of turn to. Mm. Uh, this is as far as I've gotten in uh, in trimming. An That's example right. of how to draw your pattern. Your foot or your insole. There's yeah, a couple of inches, two or three inches from the, the end. And then you draw the shoes around the that, story of audio. allowing enough space so to create your shoe up around your foot. And it will look like, I'll turn this around so you can see. Rather like that. I love them so good. Now the scissors don't work. Oh, we have other scissors. Yeah, it's not the scissors. It's the other. Oh, okay, cool. You can't cut fabric. All right. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't cooperate. 
Thanks for the fabric doesn't yeah, no like me. Words. I keep telling you that. No, it was. Uh, it's a I, personal I needed, issue. I needed a, a deadline to actually do it. Canvas versus human. Materials, but they kept getting. Oh, even the soft linen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm being very careful here. My techie guru, he's very unhappy if I touch a button. Oh. As I tear it apart, yes. Hi, Helen. Oh, oh look, I've knocked happened? everything over. Helen, you fell down. Hi, Helen. Hi, you guys. That looks really cool. That's very feel exciting. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. Yes, please. Well, I'm here. unmuted. I'm excited. That's that's so cool. Yes, I I have difficulty imagining you being muted, Helen. Ah, oh, you're funny. Uh, uh, uh. So I wanted to do what Bonnie was talking about um, with my plastic flip flop inside it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I mean, yes. you could take a you know a normal pair of of tennis shoes and just make a a leather bag around it. It'll be huge, but hey. That's a good idea. I, you know, I just made that one to my foot, and that's huge. I mean, I've got these these little barges on my on my feet. So you you definitely have hobbit feet, really big hobbit feet. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So did did John order two kits for next time? Uh, well, we haven't gotten to actually talking about uh, about the leather yet. Okay. Um, I'm having people make patterns, and then we'll when once we're we're all caught up there, then we'll talk about what we're going to do with them next week. Okay. Uh, the question is, what yeah, weight yeah. of leather you want? Um, I'll I'll show John what I've got if. Uh, if the stuff I have is adequate for you, it's yeah, kind of it's kind of on the lightweight side. Oh, that's, that's fine. Good. If that's adequate for you, I can supply a whole bunch of that. Oh, okay. Heavier, heavier weight leather for more sturdy, permanent shoes. Uh, then that's that's pretty much a trip to uh, Oregon leather. Okay. Oregon leather, by the way, has fabulous scrap bins. Oh yeah, I've got to go. They've got like four or five 55 gallon drums full of leather scraps. Oh, wow. And hey, their leather you, scraps are $10 a pound. Have you done Roman, more Roman shoes, like the earlier well, Roman? Well, these, these are Roman shoes. I mean, oh, okay. These, these, this kind of shoe has been documented in, in Roman archaeological sites. Oh, okay, cool. Well, my cell is as big enough for your foot. It's, it's okay. It's giving light to the roof, but it's fantastic. I just have to not do this. I just have to not do this. I did four inches. On the side? Yeah. All right. Let me see what you got. Let's see. I didn't give myself enough to feel. That's what I see. Okay, so lessons learned here. Someone says I didn't give myself enough room in the heel. So you want to raise the fabric, allow space behind uh, mark of your heel to come up the back of your heel on the shoe. You did give yourself three inches. Yeah. So what's going to happen here? You can see it sunset. Oh, Terry, I, Catherine, I bumped. Catherine, I bumped a button. Not a bad one yet. Just split screen. Right there. Okay. Thankfully, you put your shoe on the side over here somewhere. Well, here, there you put, go. Put, put your, put your shoe on. I'm going to turn it around so they can see what's happening here. I guess you could do it the hard way. So it's getting to be sunset, and we're working by. Camping lantern. Hey, it makes so, a brighter. It gets interesting. Or when you're making the leather, just make it an inch wide on the side. Or that's true. This is just a pattern. Yeah. Right. In fact, so I think that would work pretty well. An inch wider, and then how does the heel come together? 
I still got a pattern. Yeah. Because you may not remember it next week. Uh, so right on the correct. end of your I'm pattern. You give yourself Make leather one inch larger on uh, each side. I have right on both sides of the pattern. <laughs> Ingenious. <laughs> no, experience. <laughs> experience makes genius. <laughs> oh, dear. If any of the lights are too bright, just push them down a bit. <laughs> That's how you control I, the brightness. I think it's too dark to see down there. I was trying. Right. But. You also want to write. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll just use that pattern. I just add well, two inches. You can just add two inches to yeah, the That's what I'm saying. Is I'll yeah. Just keep this pattern. And yeah. Two inches to it. Yeah. That'll work fine. Yeah. So the um, we've had a couple questions here. People uh, didn't leave enough uh, space on their heels. Um, the rest of it looks like it fits fine. Well. This is a pattern. So when you go to cut it out of leather, you just add an extra two inches uh, onto the heel side uh, of the pattern uh, when you cut out the piece of leather. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. So, and um, I, I don't know if you heard me say this earlier, uh, it's better to make it a little too large than a little too small uh, because you can always trim it. If it's uh, if it's too much, or you can stuff it with uh, with rags or uh, or wool to uh, to bulk it out and give you a little more comfort. Um, but if you make it a little too small, then you know at least you know once you're cutting leather, if you make it a little too small, then your uh, options are limited. Yeah. You can always You're, remove more. You cannot add you more. That's what super. I forgot about my. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, and so uh, uh, Josh, in cutting out his pattern, uh, didn't leave enough of an allowance for his heel. So he's got that pattern and he just wrote on it, add an extra two inches for the heel. That works. But what that gives you now that you have a pattern, you know how large a piece of leather you need to get, basically two times the size of that, uh, of that pattern. And so with that information, then we can uh, we can figure out what pieces of leather people can use, what weight they want to use, whether we need to go to Oregon leather to get some heavier weight stuff. And if you have a high them. instep, you need more. And if you have a high instep, you need more. I just found out. The oh, okay. Oh, sorry about that. No, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. It was just one of those like you find out things. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> and then hers would be open laced on the front. On the I top. guess it I it guess could it will. Be. No, yeah. I'm just gonna add more. <laughs> <laughs> it wants to be open. I live in Oregon. <laughs> I like the open laced ones. I think they look really cool. Yeah. Right. I mean you, actually I think more often you see these open tops. Uh, yeah. and actually the this same kind of shoe open top is a fashionable thing hmm. interesting uh, fashionable yeah it's, except they've got real soles on them but uh yeah how did how did they have real soles on them they added a different piece of leather to it oh okay well what, what i was talking about there was uh modern shoes uh, oh, oh, okay. made like that this sense. with soles on them if you want oh, yeah. to put soles on these, uh, a couple of ways you could do it. One would be get a, uh, a heavier piece of leather and just cut it out the size of your, uh, the, you know, the shape of your foot and stuff it inside the bag shoe. And that'll give you a little more cushioning against uh, stones and things. Or if you want to, you can cut it and uh, glue it or stitch it if you're ambitious uh, to the outside. Uh, I'm not going there, but those are things no. that you can, those are things that you could do with this. Yeah, I might put an insole in it, but that's as far as I'm going. Yeah, it's just okay. insole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I like I said earlier, 
the, the first pair of shoes that I made and the second pair of shoes that I'm in, currently making, uh, the first pair, uh, I needed it for 15 minutes. And the second pair I'll need, I think, for probably about half an hour. Okay. Uh, other than that, I don't necessarily plan on doing a whole lot of walking in these. Uh, my feet are uh, are not quite that uh, young. Yeah. But, uh, so so um, uh, them being sturdy and long lasting hasn't really been an issue for me. So okay. I'm anticipating putting a foam insole inside mine, actually the sole of a foot flop. Yeah. Um, and maybe use something like um, rubber cement to hold it in place. Yeah. And then if I lace my shoe up tight, that should stay in place and be pretty comfortable. I'm anticipating. Yeah. Well, actually, okay, now that you mention it, and thinking, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Zab. Zab? Okay. Zab had the problem. He's the one that wanted to use a, uh, a pair of uh, slip-on shoes inside the, uh, inside the bag shoes. It didn't occur to me, he's going to have the thickness of the sole yeah. of the shoe is going to take up some of the, uh, some of the sides of the shoe. So basically, as you wrap the, the, the sides of the shoe up around, it'll end up being shorter. So if you want the same kind of shoe, you have to add the thickness of whatever insole you're using to the, to the distance from your, the side of your foot to as the edge you of your pattern. have a fatter foot. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Uh, yeah, I didn't think of, I didn't think about that since I didn't do that when I was uh, when I was making these. And but, here's something I found out when I was making mine because I had a right and a left. So my right is very much going to be different from my left by a relatively significant amount. Really? Yeah. See right how much and left is? side of the same foot. Yep. Really? Okay. So because I I pulled them up evenly around. I mean I. Mm -hmm. I cut it and then I was like, oh, wow, that's wildly different. So um, if you just mark which side is which, you could flip your pattern over and use it for yeah. the other foot. Right. I mean, it'll be slightly more fitted yeah. shoes. Right. Okay. If you cut a perfect oval, but if you if you fitted it to one foot, it may not fit the other foot unless you Real. switch your pattern. <laughs> and if you have significantly <laughs> different size feet as well, well you right. should be aware of that. That's yes. also a thing. So right. It's just, you know. Places. Uh, my, my feet are just large, so I just made the I just made the thing big, and I think I ended up trimming uh, trimming some of the excess off when I was done. <clears throat> okay, so everybody got patterns. All right, so if you could, we won't do this here because the lighting isn't that great. But if you could take your pattern at home and take a look at the uh, at the handout. Mm -hmm. So page two of the handout, oops, let's see there. Page two on the top of the handout is this little diagram. So it shows your pattern and it shows where to make slits. So those are the slits that you're going to use to put the thong through. So the, the first, few inches of your pattern from the heel out, the first few inches are where your ankle goes. And then beyond that, this area out here is where your where the rest of your foot is. So this area is going to get stitched permanently. This area around your heel is going to be more open. Um, so if you just take a look at that and get an idea, if your if your feet are really small, uh, you might you might make your slits. You know, don't use the spacing that they that they use here. It's uh, uh, you know, they they have to be far enough apart so that you're not ripping the leather when you put the uh, uh, so you know a little bit of a little bit of adjustment depending on on uh, how big your foot is might be appropriate so the um ultimately when you you want to find the center line 
and then the holes, the slits that you put in place for the uh, for the laces. Oh, here, so the the slit the slits that you put in, you want them basically to be the same distance apart, so they'll match each other on both sides. So the easiest way to do that is just find the center line of your of your pattern and just measure out from there. And you can just use a magic marker where the where the uh, the slits for the threads are going to go. Although, as Dame Johanna pointed out, her shoe is not even on both sides for her foot shape, so it might be a little bit of an adjustment getting an even fold over. Yeah, um, and I mean, you know, these things aren't Gucci's, mm -hmm. so. Well, I evened it out <laughs> to my foot, uh -huh. so because I have very wide feet at the toes. Right. And high arches is complicated for shoeing, <laughs> but um, that way one side was much farther off. Okay. But it does come to the center on top of my foot. Okay. So that's. <laughs> All right. So and basically, then you'll just be able to fold the two sides up over exactly. your foot and exactly. stitch it up that's perfectly easy. normally. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, I think I mean, that's as far as I had planned on going tonight. You got your patterns. I'd say now that you've got the pattern, take a look at the rest of this handout and uh, do that next step. And then next week, when you've got a piece of leather, then you can, then you'll be able to uh, proceed with it. Okay. So I have, I have a lovely bunch of leather here. A lovely bunch of leather. Doesn't have quite the same ring, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Huzzah! Yay, leather. Um, I've got two colors. I've got tan and brown, uh, and I've got this piece right here, which could probably uh, do for one adult or two kids. Uh, this is a heavier weight than than the other things. Um, Uh oh, you guys have glitched out. Great. Technical difficulty one more time. If you're using this stuff, you might have to navigate around. We'll get you fixed again. Okay, you're back. No, no. It's something in front of the camera. Okay. Yeah. The other one decided it needed to run a system update. Oh, I funny. love technology. Um, so it is still recording. So shall I, while he is processing the leather, shall I regale you with a story? Oh, yes, please. please. All right. Wait, All right. wait a minute. Oh, waiting a moment. Okay, I think we're up. Um, let me know in the chat if you're having issues with auditory. auditory, please, because I had to switch systems, but we should still have a decent setup. I can um, I can hear and see you. Awesome. Grandma's gonna be in charge of the phone. Okay, I can more difficult, so yell if you need something. Okay. Feel free to use the um, speaker if you've got one. And Dame Johanna is going to regale us with a story. Once upon a time, in the long, long ago of Adianta, but not so long ago, some of you might think twas only yesterday, there came unto Adianta a young lass named Johanna. It was before she had claimed titles of lady and dame, and so she came in as Johanna of the Archer. 
She looked far and near for wardrobe she would have that was proper to her ladyship. Next, she wasn't a ladyship yet either. However, the thing she had not was a pair of shoes, for Nikes don't really look good with garb. But there came a class, a mighty class at arts and sciences. Thou shalt make turn shoes, they said. And this last Joanna, she went eagerly to make the turn shoes. She went, she learned the skill, she made the patterns, she took home the patterns, and to the leather store she went. I am making shoes. I would like to have some leather. What kind of leather? I don't know. Well, what kind of shoes? Turn shoes. What are those? Oh, dear. They had leather. Dame Joanna liked blue. Dame Joanna liked white. White and blue. The accent to white and blue is a lovely black. It makes excellent belts, buckles, and shoes. Well, you would think so. They had a lovely black leather. Oh, this will be wonderful for you, they said. For shoes, it would be fantastic because it is waterproof. Some of you begin to chuckle to yourselves. Some of you begin to laugh. You know more about shoes than they did or than the hapless Joanna. So Joanna bought motorcycle seat leather. It was <laughs> gorgeous. It was thoroughly waterproof. Then Joanna went home and cut out her shoes. It was a big expense to buy that leather, much more than her pocket could withstand. However, these were going to be her investment in shoes for the NCA for years to come. She cut out the shoes. She stitched the shoes. Then comes the exciting moment where one plunges the shoes into water, she was told at the next class. Note the problem with the system at the next class. She was told, you plunge the shoes into water and soak them overnight, and then they are soft enough to be able to churn. Ah, how wonderful. The shoes are together. They have sturdy soles. The sewing has been done, punching of many holes. And yet, and yet, the water they could not soak because they were very good waterproof leather, made for motorcycle seat and beautiful black. Joanna expended all of her energies upon these shoes. It was to no avail. So she took them to the next event. It was the birthday bash, held in a nice place. Many people there in attendance. And she said, please, I cannot turn my shoes. I have left them soaking long these many days and I cannot do it. The stalwart young men of Audiantum came forth. We shall turn the ladies' shoes, they said. So they came, they turned. Many young men tried. Some of the ladies said, I am stronger than thou, and I can do it most wily. Never turned one of them the shoe. Some finally began to use props and tools. Anyone find a broom handle around here? There was much effort upon the shoes. And yet never, ever, ever were they turned. After a month's worth of soaking and many hands trying, they are now in a box. A very excellent display of what not to do when making turn shoes. <laughs> Thank you, Dame Johanna. <laughs> so, heads up, do not try waterproof leather <laughs> if you're making turn shoes. Lesson learned. That's right. So, um, we are outside, as you see, and the stars, well, there are no stars, it's uh, cloudy. No. And the mosquitoes are loving us. We're tasty. That's what we are. So next week, if you join us, we will be indoors with bright lights, bright lights. And we will be making leather shoes with lots of lacing and final bits. And Steve, you want to tell us anything else about next week and about ordering leather? Yeah, OK. So um, for those people who aren't here, uh, if you are going to be here, uh, drop me a line. Uh, let me know. You've seen how to make a yes. pattern. So yeah. give me an idea of like how many square inches of leather uh, you need. Um, and I will plan on making a trip to Oregon leather uh, sometime late next week. Let's see, next week. Tuesday. Okay, it's Tuesday, sometime late this week. Yeah. Or
more this yeah. weekend. If you go late yeah. next week, you will be in time for the pilgrimage. That's right. <laughs> um, yes. Well, whatever you get for John, just get two. Okay. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, you know, you've seen how to make patterns. Give me an estimate of how much uh, uh, leather you need. Um, probably cost about 10 bucks for enough leather for a pair of shoes. Um, I've got a this weekend is in Daytona. I've I've got a I've got a piece here that I think is enough to make well probably two pairs of shoes for people with moderate to small feet. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I'll pick it up and uh, you know we can talk about talk about payment later later. Or if you have your own uh, leather, or if you have the ability to go to Oregon Leather yourself, feel free. Now let me understand about Oregon okay. Leather. Sell um, scrap leather at ten dollars a yes. pound. Yeah. So uh, Oregon leather, if if you're if you're into leather, Oregon leather is a fantasy land. They have this. It, it's a huge place. They've got lots of lots of different uh, uh, kinds of materials. And actually, uh, the guy where I think his name was Ryan. Uh, uh, knows the SCA. He has played SCA, uh, so he knew exactly what what we were trying to do here. Um, so uh, he was very helpful. But they have just barrels full of scrap leather, and their scrap leather is ten dollars a pound. And big uh, enough pieces to make shoes. Big enough pieces to make shoes. Um, yeah. So you know you might. I have to do a little digging, but uh, they had so much stuff there. I mean, it's not tiny scraps. These are these are good good size usable pieces of leather that they're selling. Bonnie, for. Bonnie, yeah. just ask ask Steve to get just twice whatever John's getting. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah, John's that's good. Oh, he is. Yeah. Oh darn! I had some stuff to give him. Oh Whoops. no. Okay. He slept oh, well. away while you were talking. Okay. All oh right. no, he's gone. Okay. <laughs> we need we need two kits. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Also, um, well, I've got some stuff for you from Marion. Um, so well, that I was going to give to John. Hmm? Oh shoot. Well. Yeah. If you uh, don't need it before the weekend, I can. Okay. Uh, Helen, are you coming to Coronet? Yes. I'm. Johanna and I are driving together. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. I'll see you then. Yeah. I'll see you then. I'll bring I'll bring my stuff and we can talk about it then. Awesome. Okay. Very cool. Um, oh, also, all right. Talking about coronet. And before anybody hangs up, um, all right. I am going to be officially installed as the summit's minister of arts and sciences oh, at opening court. Yay! Um, Yay. Huzzah! Year, thank you. <laughs> Never being one to do things simply mm. and having been trained in the art of uh, court shenanigans, mm. um, I am planning a, a thing. Mm. Uh, so my stepping up is going to be a little more involved than just your average officer stepping up. Uh, without going into any detail about what I'm doing, I would like to ask anybody who's going to be at opening court please bring along some things with which to make noise preferably actually pots and pans are preferred uh if not pots and pans um uh, actually i'm going to bring some pie tins they're easily transportable uh yeah so that sort of thing have them ready at court don't make a big deal about it. The, their highnesses know that I'm doing something, but they don't know the details of it. So kind of smuggle them into court. Um, and when it gets to the point that it's time to actually use them, it will be obvious. I will I will make it obvious. I, I it'll be kind of towards the end of my shtick. I love shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> How fun. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So I'm kind of spreading the word. Um, you know, a number of other people know know about this, and so uh, uh, I think you know we'll have enough we'll have enough people with noisemakers to uh, 
to make an impression. To make noise. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, James Johanna. Yeah, yeah. Sharon Dietrichson said, I'm so impressed with your storytelling. Thank you so very much. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Can you use any of that? I, I should think so, yes. Yeah. I mean, there, there's certainly I a lot. To, I hate to take too much of it. Though. Oh, uh, take as much as you need. And what um, you don't take, I will put to work. You know, like I said. I think if I use, I was going to check this piece, but I think yeah. you this is Thank you, it does have the lovely camp aroma of Oh, never mind. Anyway, there is heavy duty camp. It's the most wonderful aroma of coffee. What was it they used to burn in? Oh, I will. Yeah, it is that The only issue is this one here, which is the nut spirit. Ellen, do you remember? Has a significant amount of crackling, and I just don't know. Trying to remember what that was. Yes, yeah, oh, oh, okay. yeah, good job. This one. Yeah. What was it that yeah, people well, used well, to put in lanterns, and they also used oh, it to waterproof? Thank you. Oh, that's that's so kind that. of hey, you. you know, a, uh, a, 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 uh, a wild cow. A wild cow. It's very aromatic. I heard you saying a wild cow. Give a this, and you would. Looking at know what I'm talking about. Me to park, so I didn't think oh. what it was. I, I, the wild couch. I, oh, what is that? When I need love, yeah, exactly. I, collect, I can't think of it. I can't think of it. You have that lovely off camping off aroma. Off off reminds me of the old yes, camping yes, lamps. Yes, why not? And, uh, what a good and home. slaughter them for their for their hides. Yes, yeah. what a good home. Let me know if you think of it. Usually the skin of the yeah. Karen, if you know what it is. Oh, give it Stephen, but I'll ask you, Stephen. What is the smell on the canvas that used to be in lanterns for fuel? Um, ambergris? Uh, kerosene, that's it. Oh, kerosene. kerosene. Okay. It, yes. Okay, I'm, I'm, camping. Think, I'm thinking a little farther back. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, uh, further back than I was. Quite a bit farther yeah. back. That this was is my point. childhood. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, <laughs> uh, basically, pine I tar. find, yeah, there you uh, go. you know, I I've got a bakery that says pine tar in the back. Wow. Are generally warm. Wow. Wow. That was something. Very authentic at that. The back of the house. So did are, everybody are have fun? Of course, yes. Christine. Yeah. Yeah. So you just have to I'm looking sure forward to next week. Yeah. We'll be indoors yeah. next week. Yeah. We're still yeah. going to park <laughs> out here. And you can okay. usually up tell here in the grassy the, area uh, the, the and walk through mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. not much space to park on the road out front. Like, Dan, I have a question. I think it's brown. Now I'm saying it's brown. That is not Josh. Is this what? Owen? Owen! <laughs> Owen, wasn't it you who was saying something about using what? the leather inside out? So, so, a lot of boot makers use it flesh side out because it's more durable than the grain side, but mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's going to stain a lot more and it's going to catch a lot more stuff in it. But yeah. more how is it going to be more slippery? Because It'd be more traction. Very slippery, and I can just see myself skating through True. the event. Yeah. Yeah. True. That's <laughs> the, flesh, the flesh side of it's going to be a lot less slippier because it's going to be a suedier side. Yeah. It's not I a might, suede. I might try that. That, that wouldn't be a bad idea. If yeah. I if it's wrong, I can flip it and use it the other way. Mm -hmm. It would so, work. It, if you couldn't hear her, James Johanna's concerns that the flip hmm? side of the leather will cause uh, the flicking. I don't have any black. Oh, it's just dark, dark brown or cream. Dark and brown? Steve, I'm wondering, could we use something yeah. like um, yeah. the, what do you want? the rubberized pulp to put okay. treads on the bottom of our shoes? This. Like you do for babies. So we don't slip. Or dogs. Ooh, I've got an idea. Could. I don't know how well it would stick. Yeah, that's what I was wondering if it would yeah. stick well. well yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that I'd like expect it to stick or rubberized we'll stuff. I don't know how it would um, So here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. Make things sticky. Surfboard wax, the girl says. It makes things sticky. Right here. Okay, okay. Well, you, you have a regular shoe. Yes. 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 You could put the thing in the middle of your foot in the video. Yeah. Um, That's true. You'd be better off with those instructions. You might not even notice it because you're actually in a suit. Well, you probably won't notice it. And that was like that construction style. Yeah. And there's. Okay, Catherine, you can start with this one. I already did. Oh, you have a paper? Yeah. She's packing us up. Well, this one actually out. is right. almost similar. And I'm going to yeah. say goodnight to Steve yeah, look, and Helen. Right and so is that something more you could like always just cut that one off. Yeah. Chat about yeah. before yeah. we turn yeah. off the recording. Yeah. Adding your so cut that extra and thing from off the and you the bar and you'll be perfect. Hello. 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 In the distant ether out there.
Okay, good night, you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you next night, weekend. Steven. Okay, see you Saturday. We are going to turn off. Let's see. Um,